Hi everyone. So one of my favourite films growing up was War Games. Matthew Broderick, Ali Sheedy, Debney Coleman, John Wood. It was an amazing film all about what was possible with computers at the very early stages of, you know, me understanding what a computer was. Acoustic couple of modems, you know, the phosphorescent CRTs, hacking other computers, getting into the defence force, starting a thermonuclear war. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Um, it was actually so cool that I watched it the other day again because I just can't get enough of it. And while I was watching it, it occurred to me that there are a few elements in the film that I wouldn't mind making projects out of. So for the first project, we're going to make a War Games soundboard with an ESP32. Let's go! Okay, what do we need? Well, we don't need the DVD, but it just looks cool, so I wanted to put it there. Put that out of the way. We need a breadboard. We need an ESP32. This is the Lowland 32, the Wemos. It's a pretty old board, but it doesn't matter. It'll work. Just need any ESP32 that's got the Room 32 on it. We are going to need an amplifier of some description. I am using an Adafruit PAM 8302A breakout board. Just because it's what I have. I don't have any other ones. I've soldered the header pins on and I've also got some pins in the speaker connector already. Because I don't have speaker connectors that will fit in that. So we need that. We're going to need some buttons. Four buttons. They're not dice. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> going to need an LED. I've got a blue one. It's my favourite colour. And of course blue on blue mat doesn't really work. We're going to need a resistor for the LED and we're going to need a whole bunch of wires. Wires, wires, lots of wires. Not actually that many wires. And that's really all we need. Oh no, something really important we're going to need. I have these stereo speakers I'm going to use somehow because they don't use normal connectors and this is a mono amplifier. You can obviously get stereo ones if you want to. But yeah, the samples I'm using are mono anyway, so I'm going to configure this as mono output splitting it between the two speakers. Let's get building. Okay, so we need to put the ESP32 board on the breadboard. Make sure that you've got the USB facing out. and Make sure all the pins line up. The ESP32 boards are quite wide, so in this case I've only got one row on each side, but that's all we need for this project. Cool. Before I put anything else in, I'm just going to set up some jumpers for power and ground in a few different places. I'm just going to bring them all in. Okay, so we need ground connected. It doesn't really matter what the colours are, obviously, but I've got some shorter and longer jumpers. So I'm just going to connect ground. Okay, and we also want to connect 3 volts. And there's a 3 volt pin just up the top here. So we will use that one. Okay, so we have ground and 3 volts going to our power and ground rail over here, which is great. Now, the amplifier has a ground pin and then a VN pin. So the very left is ground, then VN. So we're going to also set up ground and VN. I'm going to do that first because, do VN. What I want to do is actually put the amplifier over those, just to keep it out of the way. There we go. Excellent. Now, the actual pin, well there are two pins on the ESP32 that you can use that have got uh, a DAC on them for digital to analog converter because we're going to be taking some digital data and we're going to be outputting an analog signal to the amplifier and they have pins 25 and 26. So I'm going to use 25 which is this pin just here and I'm going to connect that to the A plus pin. You can connect it to A plus or A minus, but I'm going to use the A plus pin. Okay, now we're going to need some buttons put in place. It doesn't really matter where they go or what color order they're in. We just want four buttons. I'm going to make a four button soundboard. Try to get them evenly spaced apart. It's just always nice aesthetically. Hope they are in. Okay, great. Now I also want to set up an LED that we can use to show when there's actually audio playing, just so we can get some feedback. So I'm going to connect that 
just to here and I'm going to stick a resistor going to ground resistor cables are a little bit long but that's okay now I need the buttons, the buttons are going to be using pull-ups where I connect them to on the ESP32 so I want them all connected to ground on this side and when we're going to pull them to ground when we push them as you can see it's not a very complicated build Okay, two more hmm, it's not very straight just for the, all the OCD people in the audience which clearly I'm one of them if I wanted to straighten it okay cool, now we need to connect these buttons to some I.O. on this side, and it doesn't really matter which ones we do it to. I'm just going to do them in order, I think. I've got different length cables. I don't know how I'm really going to work this out. I'll just guess. Okay, I'll do this one to... where does that go? It goes all the way to 17, it looks like. That's fine. What's another long one? I think this is the next longest. I'm sure these are going to be way too long. It goes to 16. Where does that one go? To 4. If any of these are a problem pin later, I'll just reconfigure them later on. I don't think any of them that I've touched are too problematic, except that's pin zero. We probably don't want zero. We definitely don't want to pull up zero, do we? No, what I might do is see if I can find a shorter cable. It could be a better length. Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm going to go from here, and that's going to go to 21, if I can get it in. Turns out I should have done that one first. Tweezers time. There we go. So I'm pretty sure that's on 21. As I said, it doesn't really matter what order the buttons are in. We'll configure those inside code later on. So now we have some speakers and I need to connect the LED. So I'm going to make pin 27 be the LED. So we're going to drive pin 27 to be on when it's playing a sound and off when it's not, just so we get some feedback. And I've got my speakers. So what I've done is I've... Speakers have a, a 4-pin JST connector on the bottom, which is great, except I don't have a matching connector for that. So what I've done is just put two orange and two white wires in here. So I'm going to connect those to these speakers and I'm going to do that by bunching up a whole lot of these. So I'm going to make black and white and I'm going to feed the white ones here and the black ones goes to the orange. Okay, so there it is. I think that's going to work. I haven't tried it yet. I hope it's going to work. So we've got buttons that are pulled down, or that are, sorry, that'll be pulled up, that will push down to ground when they're pushed. And I've got an amp that's got power and data coming into A+. I've got ground and three volts coming off the Wemos board. And my speaker's plugged in. Okay, let's go write some code. So I've decided not to get a copyright strike from YouTube by using downloaded samples from the original movie, even though it's uh, much more authentic to the soundboard, I'm gonna use this Microsoft SAM Online website, which will allow me to put some text in and then create computer text synthesized voice for it. I don't want natural speaking voices, I want a computer sounding voice. It's not gonna sound exactly the same <laughs> as the original, but better I do this than I get in trouble and lose my streaming capabilities. So the link will be in the description below. The way you use it is quite simple. You just type something in. So greetings Professor Falcon. I'm just going to up the pitch a little bit and then I just click speak and then it lets you download it. I can right click to download it or I can just click the download audio file and it'll open up a, another browser. Greetings Professor Falcon. So it's not as good as the original for sure. But, as I said, this way I can't get in trouble. Close that, I can do, um... Would you like to play a game? Speak. Would you like to play a game? Yeah, as I said, not as good as the original. Oh well. So I've already pre-created a whole bunch of WAV files, which I've downloaded locally. Let's find out what we need to do with them to get them into a format that we can play them on the ESP32. I'm using a program called Audacity. It's a 
wave editing application and it's cross-platform and it's free so again the download link will be in the description below and here are the SAM files that I've made so I'm going to convert these over to 8-bit unsigned waves and that way we can turn them into hex so all I need to do is just load one in um, read the file directly okay here's the sample now it's very important to get rid of any excess sample even though the value is nothing because there's no sound happening at the time it's still data and every bit of data adds to the amount of memory and file size for the program so we need to get this as close as we can that's pretty good now what I want to do is go file export audio and I need to choose for the format it needs to be other uncompressed file and go options and it needs to be wave Microsoft and unsigned 8-bit PCM okay and I'm just going to save this and call it chess um, export dot wave let's go okay on that and you'll see there's a new file here so I'm not going to do all four of them now but you get the basic idea of how to do them all the next step is to convert them to hex and put them in the Arduino IDE. So let's jump onto that now. Okay, the task now is to convert the WAV files over to a whole bunch of data that the Arduino IDE can understand. And that's basically done in a whole bunch of header files where each one of the sound clips is a const unsigned char with the length of the data and then in this particular format. So comma delimited with the 0x prefix at the start. So we need to load up our WAV files exported data into a hex editor. The one I chosen to use is called Hex Fiend on the Mac. On Windows there's one called, I think it's HXD, I'm not quite sure, but it's a, a very popular one and it's Windows only so I can't use it on the Mac. But there are stacks of hex editors around. I've got all four of my clips exported right now. So I'll start off with chess export, I drag it into the text editor and the only requirement or two requirements for the hex editor are you need to be able to view everything in single bytes so if I look here at my views I can do my byte grouping that can be like two for instance some of them that might come in as byte grouping of four but it needs to be byte groupings of one of single and the other thing is that when you do a copy and paste from it it needs to be able to have them separated in some way whether it's a space or something else some of the apps I tried on the Mac if I copy and paste them all of the bytes are joined together there's no separating them which makes it a little bit hard <laughs> to convert over to the format we need so the data is in you need to take note of the value at the bottom so it's 38750 that's the length of the array of all the data so I'm going to do a all I'm going to copy it so I'm going to use Visual Studio Code this is nice and easy I'm going to paste the data in, as you can see, there's a stack of data here and it's all separated with spaces and then I'm going to do a replace and I'm going to find all the spaces, you can see it changes the highlighting and I'm going to replace it with a comma 0x and if I click replace all, it converts it all over to the format that we need, except for the very first one because there was no space at the start, so 0x. So that's all of our data reformatted. So I copy all of that, and then we need to go to the Arduino IDE, I'm going to find, there it is, play chess, the header file had the right one, and I'm going to replace all the data with my new data. And I need to remember, change the length of the WAV file, so I need to come back to here and it was 38750 so I make that 38750 and save it and that is our play chess WAV file copied in in a format that the Arduino IDE understands so I seem to do that for the rest of the clips which I will do offline and then we'll have a look at the code okay it's time to have a look at the code I'm using a library called Game Audio, which is a WAV player, which is available at this address up here. 
I will put this link in the description below. And it's basically a library that handles passing WAV data in and playing the data on an ESP32. It's pretty cool. So I've got my four includes, sound data one, two, three, and four, which are these here. Bit of a funky formatting happening with the large fonts. And then I've got the gameaudio.h include, and then I'm using a library called one button for all of my input on the buttons, because I like the library. So these are my button defines, the four different IO that I set up when I was putting the breadboard together, and my LED is on pin 27. I've got an int for my current sample that I'm playing. I create a reference to the game audio class called game audio, and I pass it 25, which is the GPIO we're using. Remember, 25 and 26 have got the jacks on them on the ESP32, and I'm using time zero. It's a default setup. I create four different sound classes, the game audio wave class, and I pass it in the actual variable for each one of the audio clips that are in sound one, sound two, three, four, respectively. I then set up a button class for each button, and I pass in the IO of the button that's being used, and I'm telling it by default that it's pulled high, so it's gonna look for a pull down ground to trigger the button state. I've got four different methods, click one, two, three, and four, which sets the current sample. In my setup, I set my pin modes for my buttons to all be pull-ups. I set my output for the LED, and I attach each script to each button. So click one to button one, click two to button two, etc. Inside the loop, I tick the buttons. That's how it tracks whether a button click has happened. And then this part's just really simple. I've got a current sample. If it's greater than zero, then do a switch on it. And if it's one, two, three, or four, it plays the respective sound and sets the current sample back to zero again. And then down the bottom, I'm just showing the LED if the game audio is playing or not. So if it's playing, it's high. If it's not playing, it's low. That's the whole bit of code. It's pretty straightforward. Let's have a listen to it running on the breadboard. Okay, we've got the breadboard programmed, and let's see what it sounds like. Would you like to play a game? A strange game, the old winning move is not to play. How about an ice game of chess? Greetings, Professor Falcon. Yeah, so, a couple of things. The samples don't sound fantastic, obviously, you know, <laughs> I created these with the SAM website rather than using the original sound from the movie and the computer in the movie has a very distinct sound. I'm pretty sure it was not done by a computer synthesis but it was actually done by a, a person. It's just got a lot of inflection and stuff. So that's a shame. But it's also just not very loud. Uh, let's see if we can lift the volume a bit with this pot. Yeah, I probably could have lifted the volume or the amplitude on the samples a little bit higher in Audacity. That might have helped push it a little bit more. But ultimately, it's, you know, it's an, I think it's an 8-bit or a 10-bit DAC on the ESP32 driving some pretty average data coming through through an amplifier that isn't as loud as I would have liked into two speakers. It does the job. Let's uh, hold these a bit closer to the microphone. See if you can hear them a bit better. Greetings, Professor Falcon. Would you like to play a game? How about an ice game of chess? Yeah. Well, there you go. We have an ESP32 soundboard playing WAV files, not from War Games. <laughs> yeah. It's not worth me getting a, a copyright note against this video by playing some samples that I shouldn't be playing. And it might not happen straight away, it might happen over time. But yeah, I just don't want to risk it. But feel free to play whatever WAV files you'd like. I'm not endorsing it, but you're free to do whatever you want to do. I hope you enjoyed this build video. As I said, War Games is one of my favorite films, and if you haven't watched it, please go and watch it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Welcome to all my new subs, and welcome to all my new patrons. Thank you to all my patrons for your fantastic and generous support, and until next time, bye.